surprise! I cut my hair! I'm actually rather pleased about it too. Um, I am. Uh, I still have my hair to give to you so that you can make wigs. So, we, we should get together so that I could give you the hair. And, and before anybody bitches at me about not donating it to Locks of Love, I just want to state for the record that I have officially donated my hair to Locks of Love twice now. So I did not feel bad about not donating it for a third time. Plus the salon that I go to no longer takes the giant ponytail. Um, and sends it in. No, they hand it to you anyways, and you now have to send it in. So, whatever. So, yeah, Aya wants it so that she can make wigs for ball jointed dolls. And she will get it whenever she comes to fetch it. <laughs> um, so a while back, I don't know how many videos ago, um, I said that I was going to make some story reviews for uh, video games. And considering the fact that I have now beat this game twice, I figured that I should probably make a review for it while it is still fresh in my mind. And the game is Rule of Rose. Sorry about the little cutoff scene, but... Um, I think it's a used game, so they only had this to work with, but I don't care. Um, you can still see the cover and the back. It's all that matters. This is a PS2 game, um, so unless you have a PS2 or a backwards compatible PS3, I'm sorry to say you cannot play this game. And you should really buy one of those systems so that you can play this game, because it's amazing. Um, it is a psychological horror game. Um, and despite saying that, it's not actually very scary at all. Um, it is published by Atlas and was made in Japan. Japan thought that it wouldn't be a good idea to publish it in the United States because there is implied, kind of heavily implied, lesbianism. Um, but it's just between... It's, it's not really lesbian, it's more of uh, girls discovering themselves and, you know, learning about their own feelings. Um, but Japan was still worried about publishing it in the United States, so Atlas took it up and was rather successful. Um, for those of you that play Atlas games, you will know that Atlas does not release that many copies, and if they do, um, it's because they know that it's going to be a huge success, and either way, they tend to be on the more expensive side, um, but this has been out for a really long time now, so it's actually really cheap. Um, I did not actually buy this, though. Uh, my neighbor Stacy gave it to me for my... I believe 22nd birthday, and I finally just got around to playing it. <laughs> Sorry, Stacy. Um, but yeah, the game. It takes place um, in an orphanage. The main character's name is Jennifer, and you play her as a teenager. There is never an age released but it looks like she is around 19 years old. And you can kind of see her right there. Right. Um, this is taking place in the 1930s in England, which you might have guessed that based on the uniform that she was wearing. Um, and basically, she's at an orphanage where she finds herself surrounded by these sadistic little children, but the more you play the game, the more you realize that they're not all that sadistic. They're just kind of misunderstood. <coughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, from, from this moment on, that if 
you have intentions of playing this game and you don't want spoilers, you should probably stop watching this video. This is more for those that don't care about spoilers and for those who were completely lost and could not figure out what the hell was going on. So, I have warned you. Now I'm continuing. Jennifer is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and survivor's guilt and probably some other things, but those are the main two. She has lost her memories. She has no idea what is going on, or at least that is my interpretation. Another interpretation is that she is actually a child, same age as the rest of them, but she views herself as an adult. There's enough evidence to, to support both theories, right? Um, but with all of the newspaper article clippings that you find in the game, and there's not that many, but when you find them, they have dates on them, and they make you, or at least they made me lean more towards, she was a child when this was taking place, but she is revisiting memories and is realizing what was going on. <clears throat> so, the children at the orphanage, there is Diana, the second oldest. There is Wendy, Clara, Margaret, Eleanor, Amanda, Olivia, she's the youngest, uh, Susan, Nicholas, Xavier, and Thomas, and then of course there's Jennifer. Okay. Some of these characters I'm not even going to bother to talk about because they're not important and you don't find any information on them. So there's no point in talking about it. But some of them I will mention because they do play an important role, or at least to the backstory. When you start out the game, you start out at an orphanage. And... Jennifer is wandering around, the children are basically ignoring her, and she ends up in this little backyard area where she digs up a grave um, that had a bloody bag in it. Um, and you don't really understand what's going on after that, because the next chapter has you on a blimp. And you're basically wondering for quite a while in the game, how did you go from being in an orphanage to being on a blimp? That is where her, Jennifer's story comes in. The reason that Jennifer ended up on in an orphanage in the first place is because her parents died in a blimp accident. The three of them were on a blimp doing I don't know what, it went off course, and you can find this in various newspaper articles when rooms open up, particularly the smoke room on the blimp. If you find that room, you will find newspaper articles talking... Wait. No. That's a different newspaper article. Um, and I will get back to that one. Um, you will find the blimp ones going off course in the gingerbread chapter, which is way later. But, basically, the blimp went off course, they didn't know what happened to the blimp, and it crashed, and Jennifer ended up being the only survivor. Okay? She's the only survivor. And then, she gets found by Gregory, and is later she escapes to the orphanage, okay? <clears throat> so, 90% of the game is taking place on the blimp. And there is, the children were never on the blimp, ever, right? This is just her way of trying to recall what was going on. And she's still discovering what was happening in the past. It's just for some reason taking place on the blimp. But the orphanage children were never on it, and if you were confused about the children somehow hijacking a blimp, don't worry, you weren't the only one. 
but they didn't steal the blimp. This is Jennifer's mind playing tricks on her. The imps, uh, what I like to refer to as little zombie children, are actually the orphanage children. And like I stated earlier, I will be, you know, spoiling pretty much everything, but this is mainly for those who don't care or um, for those who were completely confused. Everybody in the orphanage, with the exception of Jennifer, Clara, Mr. Hoffman, and Martha, died. Okay, I have stated for the record, everybody dies but them. Mr. Hoffman is the headmaster of the orphanage, and he just became fed up after Jennifer showed up because then things started getting weird, and he'd had enough, so he left. And Martha left when Mr. Hoffman left because she felt that she did not want to deal with all of these children by herself, so she just left. Uh, Clara was supposed to stay behind and take over because uh, she was... 16 at the time, and she was asking Mr. Hoffman to stay and work. Uh, but when Clara, uh, but when Martha and Mr. Hoffman left, she also left. And I suppose I should probably talk about Clara now. Okay, so there is an entire chapter um, called the Mermaid chapter. And Clara plays a prominent role in that chapter. In that chapter, it is heavily implied that Mr. Hoffman was sexually assaulting Clara. It is also implied that Mr. Hoffman was beginning to show sexual interest, if not was sexually assaulting, Diana as well. When you reach the end of the chapter, oh, in a second, somebody wants in. Oops. Sorry, something wants out. When you reach the end of the chapter, you find Clara transformed into a mermaid. If you look closely, you will note that she has gills on her wrists. Those are supposed to be representations of her attempting to commit suicide because of the abuse that Mr. Hoffman was doing to her. There is also gills along her side and stomach. That is implied that she at one point was pregnant and had an abortion. You can also find bloodied gloves in the attic of the orphanage that also implies the, or the abortion taking place and the vomiting of the mermaid, because the mermaid's only attack is to vomit acidic bile. Um, that's also, you know, signs of morning sickness. As well as, you know, she goes up into the air, and then she's screaming, and then randomly she's laughing, and then randomly she's crying. That's supposed to be a sign of mood changes. So it's implied that she was pregnant, had an abortion. Yeah. Um, and then with Diana, you don't see it very often, but... At one point, she will raise her skirt up, and you do see a bloodied bandage wrapped around her right thigh. And that is supposed to be a representation of her cutting herself as well, due to Mr. Hoffman taking an interest in her. Um, but anyways, I was a little confused as to why Claire wanted to stay and work for Mr. Hoffman at the orphanage, considering all that was happening. But, 
considering this was Jennifer's view as a, as a small child, it is also implied that she may have been trying to see something that wasn't there. At the end of the game, there's usually more questions than there is answers. But, either way, Clara left. Um, and Martha, who's kind of like the maid, uh, while it's implied that the kids killed Martha, um, while on the blimp, she doesn't die. She runs away. She leaves. Um, and she actually was trying to do good by the children. She had contacted the police, you know, to tell them about what was going on around the orphanage and her concerns. This is where I'm about to get into Gregory, for those of you who are confused about that. Um, but the police dismissed her concerns, which led to all of the children, besides Clara and Jennifer, dying. 